and welcome to the FBTV Weekly Highlight Show. First of all, we're out to Heath Park and our first look at Brisbane Women's Premier League action for this year in Round 5 where Eastern Suburbs host UQFC. East currently sits second on the table, two wins, a draw and a loss. Their return so far. And this is Bellarizzo here for Reese. Puts it over the top of Anna Wilson. And East have an early 1-0 lead. Chloe Bellarizzo, unmarked. Lobs the keeper. 1-0 to East inside the first five minutes. Throw in here. On the two UQFC players tangled there in... Lauren Blake and Giovanna Shafovskoy. I think Blake saw the funny side of it there. Both going for the ball at the same time and legs and feet tangle. Looked like a smile on Lauren Blake there. Lost there by Ballarizzo. Ball into the box from Shafovskoy. Claims of handball from the UQFC supporters on the replay. The referee deemed. Probably in consultation with his assistant. No free kick on that occasion. UQFC player goes down there in Tannic and once again, no foul, but it's a corner here to UQFC. Played on, and here's Hilton. UQFC have equalised 10 minutes before the half time break. Corner played in. Over the head of Cronin. Blake was there as well, but she couldn't latch on to it. But what she couldn't latch on to, Skylin Hilton could. Bellarizzo, the first goal scorer of the night. And Anna Wilson, perhaps a bit of confusion there, but in the end, harmless for UQFC. Askin loses possession there to Tannock. Gets a cross in, past uh, Hilton. And somehow, East have managed to keep that out with the assistance of the upright. The cross into the box. Falls in front of Hilton. Cronin slips at the critical time. Tries with the second effort, but can only find the left hand upright. Corner here to UQFC. And the ball ends up in the back of the net. UQFC take the lead for the first time in this match. In comes the corner, and Skylyn Hilton has her second of the night, and also her side second, more critically, the lead for UQFC. Askin on here. East with a dangerous run. Shot on goal. And tipped away there by Wilson. On the hour mark, UQFC... Launch another attack. Cronin into the box and ruled offside on that occasion. Let's take a look at that on the replay. Ball played through by Holly Mee. We won't get to see it when the ball was actually played. But replay perhaps suggesting that the UQFC player was onside there. A poor clearance there. Falls for Shafovsky. And Giovanna Shakovsky, five minutes from time, looks to have given her side the first win of the season. Shakovsky beats Julia Duffy, 3-1 to UQ, but East, they won't die easily here. Goodwin, oh, off the woodwork. Still alive here for the Tigers though. Played in by Hadwin and into the side netting. Moore, as we head into stoppage time. Referee blows the full time whistle. UQFC come away from Heath Park with all three points. 3 1 winners against East. I'm here with Midgerton President Roger McIntosh. Roger, you're the second biggest club in football Brisbane. Tell us a little bit about uh, the three years that you've been in here and the changes that you've made to get to where you are now. 
Yeah, thanks, Darren. Um, look, Mitchelton's a, a long a long history of being a successful club, and uh, I've been building on what's been going on here for 80, 90 years. So, uh, Although the last few years the senior team has probably taken a bit of the limelight, our real focus has been on junior development. Um, we've employed a, a paid junior technical, technical director and that's been a, a massive step forward for us. It's really uh, given a lot of help to not only the junior players but the, the junior coaching staff and, uh, and that, that is really what our focus has been about more than anything in the last three years and, that, and that's paid dividends. Our, you know, our numbers have, uh, you know, have, have gone up quite dramatically. Have you found that in, an increase in junior numbers means an increase in sponsors? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, senior team takes a bit of the limelight, but end of the day, uh, the key demographic that our sponsors are interested in, in is mum and dads with kids. Uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in sponsorship. Uh, that we've been able to give them uh, what we feel is very, very good value as well. Now, you've obviously got the fields to, to service these numbers. Um, what are the, the other things that you need to do as a club to, to maintain the numbers and, and keep everyone happy? Yeah, well, our focus is always on infrastructure and coaching. So we'll continue to develop our, our coaching structure in our juniors and our seniors. Uh, but we've got other things in mind with uh, infrastructure as well. been working for nearly two years now on an artificial uh, surface project. Uh, we've come a long way uh, down the track with that. And uh, a few things go our, go our way. Uh, we could be uh, very close to giving our field one uh, with a, a fully synthetic surface uh, FIFA 2 standard. So uh, we'd be uh, very, very pleased to see that happen. And that is the sort of thing that's going to enable this club to continue to grow. We may not be able to grow at the rate we have in the last two, three years continuously. We realise that. Uh, but we still want to be able to con continue to grow. And you've also got a, a massive uh, women's presence within the club. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, fantastic uh, women's program here, uh, ably led by uh, Zoe and, and Susan. Um, so we've got um, yeah, w women's team in every division, all five city league divisions, and of course a Premier League team they're playing tonight. And and we've also got uh, five all, all girl junior teams, and that's a really massive focus of our club as well. It's a it's a huge uh, market that's has been probably a little bit untapped, perhaps. Uh, uh, throughout, throughout football generally and it's something that we're, we're very focused on. And now it's Capital League One action from the Balbowrie Sports Ground between Mogul and Annerley. Mogul in 8th place, 7 points so far. Annerley in 11th, 5 points. And it's Mogul who score the opening goal. Just two and a half minutes into this one. Mogul player on side there. Sam Chesterfield beats the offside trap. Races into the box and beats the Emily keeper in Luke Sutherland. Sione Ruiz. Now Caponini. Oh, good save there from Sullivan. Fantastic say when you think about it. Just buys himself some extra time. Referee Paul Eldridge just coming to check on the welfare of Thomas Sullivan. Now let's look at this shot from Caponini. Going back is Sullivan. Great tip onto his bar. And that's a save of the month contender there from Thomas Sullivan. Corner for his side at the other end now. I mean, launch a counter here just after the half hour. Shot on goal with the woodwork. And Lee have equalised in the 34th minutes. Attacking Ray down the right wing. James O'Brien makes his way into the box. And a perfectly timed finish. With the assistance of the upright, one all in this Capital League one match out here at Bell Bowery. And here's James O'Brien again. Oh, another good run. O'Brien plays it through for Jared Clark. And Jared Clark makes no mistake and puts his side ahead for the first time in this match by two goals to one.
Ball played through for Jared Clark. 2-1 to Annerley now. Throw in there for the benefit of Wallace, it looked like. Now Muggle come away with possession. Chesterfield. Ball in. Fantastic finish. From inside the six-yard box. And Moggle have equalised. Callan Spence it is from the edge of the six-yard box. Heads it on first time. Brilliant finish. Two all. Short corner here for Annerley. Now on towards the back post. Oh, that's a blistering effort. And Sullivan again called into action. Matt Lindley on that occasion for Annerley. Forces a save from Sullivan. Spence. Annerley initially won it, but now played again here for Spence. And 3-2 now to Moggle. Ten minutes after the half-time break. Ball played through the Annerley player, keeping Spence onside there. And he makes no mistake from just inside the 18-yard box. And here they come again. Another chance here for Moggle. And couldn't uh, capitalise on that one. Good crowd out here on a Sunday night. For this Capital League one action. Skimming ball on there. Shot from just outside. And once again, this match is back on level terms. The Mughal players looking for an offside decision. And as we look at it on the graphic, Michelle Caponini, deemed to have equalised. Referee Paul Eldridge in consultation with his assistant. The goal stands. Spence. Straight to Sutherland on that occasion. Entertaining match, this one. Plenty of goals. Free kick here to Moggle. Look to move it on quickly. Kept in there by Stacey. Ball delivers the ball onto the penalty spot. Moggle has scored again. Crowd excited by that goal, seeing their side take the lead again and of course who is it it's Kellen Spence Moggle lead 4-3 just playing it in the corner there Moggle now they'll have a chance to ice this match and over the crossbar four minutes of stoppage time referee Paul Eldridge blows his full-time whistle Moggle move into fifth with a 4-3 defeat of Annerley at home. So let's take a look at the Trophy Superstore Premier League Round 8 results. Rochdale Rovers defeated Wolves 2-1. Mitchelton and Lions 2-all. Peninsula 3-1 winners over Capella Bar. UQFC and Eastern Suburbs shared the spoils. So too did Turinga and Ipswich Knights while Logan defeated Albany Creek 3-2. The latter after Round 8. And Logan's unbeaten run continues. They lead from Lions, Peninsula Power and Mitchelton. Trophy Superstore Premier League Championship table and a good weekend for Logan as a club, winning all four of their matches against Albany Creek. That puts them top, while Albany Creek and Wolves occupy the relegation positions. Capital League 1, Mount Gravatt 2-0 over Brisbane Force. Bayside got the three points against Grange Thistle. Pine Rivers did it away from home against Southside Eagles. Brisbane Knights 2-0 winners against North Star. North Pine continued their good run, 3-1 against Holland Park. And as we've just seen, Moggle 4-3 winners over Annerley. So North Pine, they lead the competition with 18 points. A four-point break over Brayside. Pine Rivers in third. Capital League 2, Westside and Newmarket 2. All Centenary defeated Redcliffe PCYC 3-2. Once again, coming from behind, what else would you expect? Pine Hills 2-1 over Park Ridge. South 4-0 to 
against Western Spirit. Slacks Creek 3-1 upset over the gap while Oxley defeated Ipswich City 2-0. South have a four point break on Oxley. Centenary also on 15 points. Western Spirit round out the top four. On to Capital 3 and Narangbar were 2 1 winners against Tawong. Acacia Ridge dropped their first points of the campaign, a scoreless draw against Tarragindi. Sanford were 1 0 winners against Jimboomba. Ridge Hills were 2 1 winners against AC Carina. New Farm over Virginia United by the same scoreline, while Clairvaux scored five second half goals to defeat Kangaroo Point 7 0. Acacia Ridge and Narangbar both on 16 points at the top of the table with New Farm in third. Capital League 4, Maroondoo 6-1 against Brighton Bulldogs. Logan City 2-1 against North Brisbane. Green Bank 2-1 against Logan Village, while Barden Latrobe had the bye. Maroondoo lead the way from Brighton, North Brisbane and Barden Latrobe. Brisbane Women's Premier League, Eastern Suburbs lost at home to UQFC as we've just seen. Logan FC 5-0 winners against Souths. Tawong 1-0 over Capalabar, while the local derby and Pine Hills will have bragging rights there. Annalee had the bye. Pine Hills lead the competition. Six-point break over their nearest competitors. So coming up on FB Media TV, it's another action-packed week of football. Our feature game midweek is from the Westfield FFA Cup Round 5, the Ipswich Derby, where the Trophy Superstore Premier League's Ipswich Knights take on the PlayStation 4 NPL Queensland Western Pride. Our feature game next week is Trophy Superstore Premier League action, the washed out round one match between Logan and Turinga. The highlights show Roachdale Rovers versus Peninsula Power and under 18 action between Logan FC and Turinga Rovers. And we'll also have FC 11 Super Youth League highlights from Roachdale Rovers and South United in the 14s and 15s. Yeah.